How's everybody doing? All right. Well, there is a lot to uh, celebrate, a lot to discuss. But I got to tell you, life is funny. Life is funny. Funny? Isn't it funny? Funny. Funny. And you know, you got to laugh. You got to laugh. Let me tell you. The shit has hit the fan. This black magic of witchcraft has gotten out of hand. Three people have died behind this. Families destroyed. Money stolen. Uh, attacked by me, my father, the company. That, ooh, and, uh, but God is the victim. You know, when you walk with God, nothing can harm you. And I pray to these people. I send them. And all this to try to stop it. Because it was the, I'm that Virgo on YouTube that is going to. Yes, it is me. So you guys, those readers on YouTube, on the Virgo, you have done a fantastic decoding of what's going on. And I didn't even know it until someone got me hit to it. And I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. But, but you know what? And I did not want to come here and do this video. I did not want to do it. No, no, no. First of all, and, and more is coming. More is coming. And the, the, the shocker, I, I said, you know, I, I said, God, because God came to me and said, spoke to me. Other being that I would, it happened to me. And I'm like, oh, okay. Am I doing a good job? I think that was the first thing I had. Am I doing a good job? Because oh, the, the boss is coming. I had no idea that all of this was going on. Boy, and that explained the disruption of the company, the school, uh, the, you know, the, the failed and missed appointments and not being able to, and the computers breaking down, my phone breaking down. When I did the Lemuria part two, the phone was blinking off the chain and I saw the archon, you know, the evil one, coming through. You couldn't see it. From your side, everything was fine. On my side, it was a nightmare. Things were moving around. It was a, it was a high level, you know, D-E-M-O-N. No, but, but listen, in situations like this, you've got to remain calm and in control. I always, you know, I've got my pentacle, you know, with a very arc, you know, angel protecting me. Uh, Archangel Michael, that's my boy, Archangel Michael, you know, he, he, he'll fuck you up. Fuck you up. I don't understand. You know, you don't, you how, but you know what it is? People will try. People will try. This, you know what? You know what I think will happen. You know what I think happened? I think that most people think I'm full of shit. That this is all an act. You know, like a like a like a big label. No, it ain't. This ain't no label, or maybe it should be. This ain't no, my aim. I'm a shaman. And an astrologer. It's very rare to have two because both are professions. You could become an astrologer or you could be born with the gift to be an astrologer. You don't get up one morning and say, I'm going to be a shaman out of the blue. You have to be born a healer to be a shaman. I was lucky to have both faculties. And let me tell you, uh, one will settle for less. Because then when you have these, uh, and then I have my third eye open, you know, I'm a clairvoyant. So when you see and feel these things, you know, you want to pretend like it's not happening. You know, you go to the, you know, the rational mind to try to make sense of things. Because as shamans, we are already born into an ethereal world. Uh, the world of different levels and different planes of existence with different beings and a whole different parallel reality than here in the earth plane, you know. And to be born in, in carbon matter and have 
the mind and the unseen world and the seen world, it's quite a juggle. You know, so on top of that, then being a businessman and running a company and running a school, a school, um, that's a lot on the plate. But it was a nice, nice schedule. Nice, I tell you, ever since I entered into my lunation, age fifty-four, you all felt it. You know, for for the breakup of their relationship two years earlier. You know, yet it's been two years now. Can you believe that? You know, but it's been sloppy, and it's not over. Oh, Lord. And I, that, I, I just cannot discuss it because the police is involved. And the investigators, I mean, out of hand, they, they, found, they told me that they put a contract out on my life, and that they're doing this and that. And I, I just started laughing. I literally started laughing. I mean, I, did these people lose their mind? But I have to tell you. I didn't want to share it because, you know, not everybody believes in God or believes in the Bible or even believes in what I'm doing. You know, to many people, I'm the devil and I should be burned at the stake. No different opinion then than in the Salem days. And that's fucked up because you have the good and you have the bad of everything. Even people like me, black magicians. You, uh, you know, life is a polarity, a polarity. Oh my God, they went to the graveyard, oh, they, oh, all kinds of shit, all kinds of shit. And more is coming, more coming out. And, I, and, and you know how many people were involved? 28 people and a coven. What, what is this? Now, this is why there are many more people like me on the air. Because there are many are afraid of things like this happening. But if you walk with God and God is in front of you, nothing can harm you. Nothing. If I sit down and tell you what happened to all these people, mm -mm. doesn't even matter. You keep it going, you keep it flowing. Sorry that that's the choice that these people took to do that. You know, and, and this is an example, not of jealousy, or that there's plenty of that going around directed towards me. Yes, jealousy can be managed and handled. The problem is envy. These people were envious. They wanted to be like me. They were copycats. Well, you see what happened with Instagram. They wanted to kill me, take credit for my work, and then become me. Like, I'm sick, sick stuff, well elaborate plans and plots. What I was, I, I was in shock. I couldn't go to work, couldn't do anything. I had to sit down and the Virgo came out. I'm like, mm, mm. But you know what? I didn't feel anything inside, nothing, no fear, nothing. Because God is in the way. God is in control. They're telling me to rotate the device. What is this now? To rotate the device. All right. Let's rotate the device. Is that good? Is that right? Uh, there we go. All right, now, let's rotate the device. Then. So this is um, so, 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 so you know, I listen. I had to gear up. I had to gear up, like it says in the Bible. You gotta put the armor of God. There's that Bible. The armor of God. Well, I don't fuck around. Let me tell you, I don't fuck around. It, it was rough. So then they told me, why should I go on the air? And discuss this, this, not because I don't want to discuss my business. You all know me. I put everything out there. I don't give a shit. You know, I'm 54 years old. It's time for me to give back. And that's why I help my subscribers. And let me tell you something else, too. Now that we're talking about you subscribers, my subscribers. There is, I've seen something's happening. Something's happening. Uh, I've seen it in the astral world. 37,257 of you have telepathic gifts. Many of you are lucid dreamers. Many of you are, many of you are shapeshifters. But we are in the Aquarian age, the age of magic, technology, advancement, relying not just on the physical flesh, but on the other vehicles that are in us. Remember, we are composed of seven bodies, not just one. 
The one is the last one that we see, but there's six others. And this is where the action really takes place. So a lot of you can, and a lot of you have the third eye open. Many of you are empaths, clairvoyants, clairaudience. And some of you have some other very rare gifts. And about another, I would say, 18,000 of you, or maybe it overlaps, have the gift of healing and laying of the hand. Some of you can hear other people's thoughts. You know, don't be scared and shy away from these gifts. You are the generation that's born with You are the millennials from 1995 to 2008. You guys, are, you were in Atlantis, that whole generation of, of millennials. You came from Atlantis. And you're bringing a lot from what happened in that period here. You've reincarnated in here to advance the collective and reprogram the matrix. The movie The Matrix is really telling you a lot of powerful and terrifying truths. This is, I mean, look, look I'm, I'm 54 years old. My generation, you know, the, the time's going to come where the grave will be calling us. You will be left to rule the country and be the ruling class. Listen, you cannot rely on the old methods and tools of the Piscean age, which is going to die with us, the, 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 this generation and the, and the one, the one above, above us. Because you are going to be, bring a fresh start. And I think this is why millennials are angry and upset and don't want to trust our status quo or the way we do things. They're not, you're not supposed to. You are with Pluto in Scorpio. Many of you have Pluto in Scorpio, that signature. You are here to disrupt and, and, and help aid the washing of the old regime of this country in particular since we are in our Pluto return. Did you know that February 20th, I, I believe it was the 20th or the 22nd, Pluto was at an exact 27th degree. Capricorn, right back, right point. It's gonna go retrograde and it will hit. And it will hit again in July and again in December, a final before it goes direct. Between these three days, shit's gonna go down. But it's already happening and it's happening mentally in the mental world. There really is a spiritual warfare going on of the magnitude in which I had no idea. Because, you know, there's so many realities and planes of reality. You know, you want to go crazy trying to tap into all of it. I'm like, you know what? Let me be the, the, the drone. Just give me bare minimum and I'll give it to the collector and I'm good. I'm good. I tell you, they told me today, listen, bitch, get up and do this and let them know. I'm like, no, I don't want to. They go, you better get up. Ow. It was mean. Like, okay, okay. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. I did not want to do it. Uh, because again, you know, religion is a sense of I I don't believe in religion. I don't. I respect it. I respect it. But I, you know, I, you know, because there's a place for it. You know, it, it, there's a ninth house, Sagittarius. There's a basic place for it. You know, so you know, I can't wish of things happening. Ah, I think I was. I think I was not live, and then I was live, live, and then you know, again, it, it, you know, the demon. He, he tried trying it. So uh, I had to gear up, gear up, and go into battle with my psalms and my, and my witches and my witchery, what I do. Because it's like the witch of Endor in the Bible. God uses witches. Ain't nothing wrong with witches. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. It's in 2 Timothy. You know, God uses everything in all of us. We're all part of the war against the bad elements that, or principalities. Like it says in Ephesians. You're not fighting flesh and blood, but principalities in high places. And I think it's time that we take a look at that. I think it's time that we recognize that the reality in which we sit in and look, you know, dominated by the ego, which governs the five senses, is not all that there is. It's actually a drop in the bucket compared to what else is out there. And then the capacity, the human capacity we have to, and if we, if we could just trust ourselves and tap into it, we can tap into some, some incredible talent that is inherited and by birthright is in us. So I don't understand why people would do witchcraft and would hurt you and take away your gifts so that they can have it. It's ridiculous. But you'd be surprised how many people do it and try it. And sometimes it works. But it usually works on those who lose faith. 
I never say that these are my powers. Never. I never say that. As a shaman, you shouldn't. I always say that I am a vessel and a vehicle that the divine channels through. But I don't own the power. I'm used and I'm just a soldier, you know. And when you align yourself with the creator, you really do become a magician. He will support the magic that you do because the intent is the real magic behind the ceremony and the ritual. It's what's in your heart that bears fruit and also has the germinal seed of intent. That's the real magic. People get it twisted. People get it twisted. That's why these occult and esoteric schools are important. Because they show you the real deal. But they're not going to show it to you to Larry and Shmo, who are not mentally disciplined and structured. Then they won't be able to handle something sacred like that. So it does come with a certain degree of sacrifice and discipline and concentration. Anyone is capable of obtaining that. I just thought that I had to say that. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take a pause. And have a little bit of wine. Uh, so yeah, so I'm doing a whole series of rituals and cleansing and my prayers and novenas for those who've passed. Uh, and um, what can I say? This has brought the whole game to a whole another level. And that includes all of you too, particularly my subscribers. The uh, my subscribers, you guys are very gifted and talented. This is why I only have 50k and not a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, or three hundred thousand. All of that's going to change. All of you can help subscribe a friend. One of you is 50,000 of you, that's a hundred thousand. Two per subscriber, we can bring this bitch all the way up. But it's important, this is your channel. And since there are no schools that are open, and many of you are not non initiates. I am going to take it upon myself to give you the first grade of initiation. It is a basic knowledge, and if you feel that you can handle it, you can go on your way. I will, but and I will only give one because this should not be for people below age fifty. It shouldn't. It's not going to be good for you. It should be fifty and above. You should not tamper with deeper stuff or moving the ego aside or killing the ego to be spiritual. If you're young, the ego is important. It has a function. That's why we have one. It governs material matter. You're too young to uh, to kill the ego and awaken spirit. Because the first thing that's going to happen is that you're going to get bored of being in earth life because you killed the ego. All desires go. Shoot. Now, these are the people that get crazy or end up committing suicide. Because you are woken the higher self too early. The human experience has not yet reached a consolidation, which is usually towards the middle of life, heading towards the end of life. Things have their place. And this is something that if you know it and you understand it, you can appreciate more living in the present. If anything teaches you uh, our, our history has any value, even the prospects of the future, if any of these two... Um, uh, paradigms have any value is that we should really stick to the present living because it really shapes what happens tomorrow and, and it gives a different perception of what happened yesterday. And these are wonderful discoveries that you should uh, warn yourself. You, you won't be able to do that if you kill the ego too early by becoming too spiritual too early. There are rules that have to be governed, which is why these are discussions of esoteric science and initiation. It requires discipline and a commitment and a commitment and a sacrifice, all at, all at the same time. So that so spirituality is something that is going to be the the bedrock towards the Aquarian age. It will be the bedrock. I think when Jesus came, bringing the piety in age and bringing the gospel and the word of God and and and, and the, uh, the the whole religiosity, I think it was to give us a comparison of what not to follow versus what to follow. I don't think Jesus, and I've read all of the gospel, never did he say that in order for you to save yourself, you should follow a pope or some leader that is in charge of your life and destiny. No. He always spoke, seek your own salvation. It's all over Matthew, 2 John. So, I didn't, so, it, so that's a journey. That, that's going inward. And it's self-transformation which occurs by introspection. And that part is always very difficult for people because people don't really want to look at themselves honestly and look inward. And you have to understand the law of attraction and the law of opposites. If you don't handle your shit, 
do your internal work to be a better person, then you are going to attract a person that's going to mirror exactly the flaws that you don't like about yourself. Haven't you been in that kind of situation where you are the worst part of you that you don't want nobody to see is actually the attributes that are in the relationship that you attract? Because you think that by not showing it and hiding it from yourself, that it won't come up. Of course it will, because you know the guys are, are looking. Oh, look what he's doing! Then they're going to send you a prototype of you, but worse, in the same proportion of adversity that you treat yourself, or the lack of self-love will dictate how mean or she will be to you, because you're being mean and bad to yourself by not loving yourself. Trust and believe that that's going to be reflected in the partner, because opposites attract. Right? It's the law of attraction. You know, God is not so hocus pocus as people like to make you believe. It really truly is very scientific. You know? But that's really functioning the higher octaves of the mind. It's the mind that now needs to be developed and needs to be understood. It is a matrix in itself. The good thing is that it parallels the matrix from above. Remember, we are living in a hologram. This is a holographic existence created by the dictates of what we put in here. This is something that you have to grasp seriously and really look at it and study it. Because let me tell you, like the Jetsons, remember the cartoon, the Jetsons, they're you know, flying all over in the cloud. Or it's going to be just like that, or like Star Trek. You know, remember the Lando Calrissian with the, the clouds? You know, and oh, I think it was uh, Star Wars, uh, The Empire Strikes Back. You know, the, the, they were like, Cloud. I saw it in visions. Where do you think Steven Spielberg got these visions? He had cash and records of what's coming all around. And it used to look like that in the Lemurian period. Go to my channel, Patreon, subscribe to my Patreon where I give specialized content. I could not discuss Lemuria any further. The computer broke, the phone broke. I had to get a new phone. This demon was rough, but and he did not want me to share these things. Because if you learn what I have to tell you about Lemuria, Things are going to go boo and make sense. And you'll get to know a little more closer of who you are and where you're really capable of that has been hidden from us for a long, long time. Again, uh, the agenda of the clergy and church. However, hopefully in the future we can develop a better relationship and things can be more out in the open. Because you know the Vatican and a whole lot of shit going on. Mm -mm. And we'll leave that alone since I'm wearing the same cloak, right? So we'll, we'll respect that, but... Mm -hmm. uh, all of this was a prelude to our subject today about relationships. But first, I gotta tell you, if you don't already know, what can fuck up relationship is... There's three things. I guess I might as well just jump in, right? Uh, well, first, let me get a little bit of this Merlot. Uh -huh. You don't know a clue of what's been going on. I didn't know. I brought educated myself. Look at all the videos from February all the way to now. Virgo, YouTube, readers. Yes. Every, detail by detail. I love all of you. Readers are fantastic. And YouTube, fantastic. All of you. Fantastic. Fantastic. Fantastic decoys. You know what? Well, I couldn't do it. Better my fucking self. And I'm going to let you see it. You see it. So I don't have to put it in here. Oh, I don't want to get in trouble, you know, with the police. They're coming. Oh, what? what, what, what? It's a song. You own everybody. Be here. Be bored. You know, that this, this is the humdrum of life. You gotta the bad and a little bit of the ugly. And even the gods like to be entertained every once in a while. That's how you gotta look at it. With a grain of stuff. And laugh it away. Uh, no, what's happening? It's going boom, 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 boom. We're at the witching hour. That's when they start. But I got my Bible. I got my Bible here. Something three. And I got all my shit ready. You know, so you got to. You got to be strong. Like you got to put the armor of God on. But let me see now. If... Yeah, it's off. Okay, let's see. Uh -huh. Okay. 
I did not want to do it. I think I thought I thought the information was too intense. Too intense, yes. Oh yeah, that's how you call Archangel Michael. Yeah, you call him. Oh the Trump. Oh yeah, all those things that the Bible talks about. Oh, they they real, real magic, real magic, real magic. And the magic that you see that Moses and King Ramses were doing, they were battling each other, remember? They were battling the, the snake, the staff turned into a snake. And then the other one was, um, uh, they were like bad, almost like um, Lord of the Rings with, with Gandalf and Baltimore, or, you know, you know, <laughs> fighting, you know? That's exactly what happened in Atlantis and in Lemuria. What the Bible is talking about with Moses, that didn't happen in Europe, that happened in Atlantis. Mm. All, I'm telling you, it's a massive corruption of knowledge and rewriting history. Okay. That's what caused the flood. And that's what we know of it all over the world. Atlantis sat right in the middle of the earth. When you disperse water like that, it goes in all directions. So it makes sense that everybody learned about it, heard about it, because that's what sung. It was not about, you know, it, it was the ark. He was leaving Atlantis and landed in Egypt. I don't believe it was Ararat, which is present-day Turkey, where they found the ark. Uh, mm, no. Um, I, 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 no, no. It was a different topography and terrain. So to try to take shift and change, it wasn't like, it was not, that wasn't the, uh, the terrain. But I want to tell you that it was. Okay, let us uh, discuss first. Oh, uh, somebody asked on YouTube uh, to have, do a series on, you know, soulmates and the different types of soulmates. I did do them. I did do them. They're there, and it's 500 videos. They're there. Uh, I'm going to check. I'm going to double check with Miss Farmer to see if um, she moved them to Vimeo, which they are on sale. You can also purchase a lot of my videos there on Vimeo. Or you could join Patreon for specialized content. And of course, you know, see my, my uh, videos, which I plan to do weekly like I used to. But ever since, again, the, the, and then the side of return hasn't hit yet. So that's, that's, that's looming. So it's, it, it's been quite a, a fierce um, roller coaster. You know, if you almost feel like a Luke Skywalker or Han Solo in Star Wars, or they're in the ship and they're navigating the asteroids, it's shh. You know that that the oh, yeah oh it, it get like that that's Pluto it, that you get every uh, uh, one inch of a wrong move pull life is on the edge you live or you die by inches that's Pluto in the color red you no know. yeah life gets intense I tell you I tell you so let me clear the situation about soulmate. And I have to discuss it because this is what me, what I, I got into a pickle with uh, choosing the wrong soulmate. That can happen. But when that happens, it's usually done on purpose because God is using you to either heal a soulmate or advance it or teach a lesson. Especially if you have karma mates you know, or karmic, like it said in uh, and you have to know if you are involved with a karmic person or not. Because if you are involved with a karmic person, then you are going to inherit the karma of that person. And that could be by accident. You're not going to know this meeting the person because you don't know their soul. A shaman or an astrologer or spiritual will detect the different types. If you pair up with the wrong one, that could be a problem. So... Let me give you the uh, the six types of soulmates. Uh, the header is soulmate. Don't say, oh, I met my soulmate. That, that's the header. What type of soulmate did you meet and how do you know? And for you to know that, you need to know what you are. If you don't know what you are, then you are not going to know what your partner is. And differentiate them. This is specific knowledge. And this is knowledge that has not been taught to the collective. I mean, if you read books on esoteric and the occult, it, 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 now more than before, there's more about it available. 
But me growing up, it was not available, that information. You know, what it really was. In fact, I didn't learn about it until I was in my early 30s. And I've been practicing astrology since I was, you know, 22, 23. So, um, you know, it, it's outside of the field of astrology, which is why I didn't know and got to learn it later. Because, and, but of course, when you go enter into esoteric astrology, you tend to learn it there or come across the material more frequently than if you are studying mundane astrology. But for most purposes, that kind of information really remains under the occult. Uh, but I uh, delineated for you the different categories. You have A, karma mates, B, twin flame, C, twin soul, D, same soul, E, soulmates, F, monastic. Though, and then there may be other ones that are differentiated, but these are the big ones. And there is a difference between mate, soul, and flame. And karma mate. Those are four categories. Soul, mate, flame, twin, and karma. It's five of the six because the, the, the sixth is monastic. Now, let's take a pause and jump into the uh, three archons or the three demons as the church of uh, uh, reference are. Uh, um, the three demons, the three archons of demons that destroy relationships. Okay. Num uh, A. Category A. Okay. Ego complexity. Ego complexity which deals with the uh, individual psychology and uh, psychological conditioning of his environment from the outside the family, but also from the family, you know, the, the, the psychological conditioning coming from the parents and shaping the pathos and ethics of the person who becomes an individual and, and really follows the, the traditional norms set by the parents. And then there is the conditioning of the schooling. Okay, uh, you know, the, you got people who are racist and uh, they weren't born racist. They were made to be racist because of their environment. That's an example of the psychology of the environment nurturing that kind of racism and also the parents and their psychology inside the home and the psychological conditioning of the child based on the pathos and beliefs of the parents. So that in itself is a separate category and we call that ego complexity. That's A. Then B is mismatch. You paired up with the wrong partner. And I just mentioned the few of the headers. That there's a demon or archon that specifically is designed to destroy the relationship by attacking both people. Seeing what the weakness is and then mirroring it with each other and then uh, and bringing it outside so others can see to shatter the glass from within. Uh, and the dynamics, there are books written about how this occurs. Okay, Mismatch. And then the third category is the third party. When one of the couples steps out of the relationship and has an affair and now has involved a third party. So these are the three categories that can break a relationship. The complexity of the person, either he's too young or too old or he's not ready or he's underdeveloped and that can get in the way of developing the skills that can foster interpersonal relating, right? And then uh, C is, of course, the, um, uh, the, the, the third party. Uh, uh, the demon comes with the third party. But what awakens the demon in the third party is the roving eye of one of the couples, which then captures the eye of someone in that person, the demon goes in and then he comes in and becomes the interloper, the infiltrator, and destroys the relationship. 
That's what happened in my case. Right? So, and, it, and, you, you, and of course, you're dealing with narcissistic and so, sociopathic people. Extremely narcissistic and, 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 and emotionally unstable or borderline psychotic. You, you just never know what kinds of people you want to attract. So I gave you those three categories. Those three categories. The complexity of the person is your complexity, which is governed by the person's psychological conditioning of the parents and the environment, and B is the mismatch. Again, uh, now let's go back to soulmates and let's look more uh, succinctly each category and what it means. Okay, now let's start with karma mates. If uh, karma mates, is someone that uh, a mate you uh, have sex with this person uh there's attraction most likely nine out of ten they will mirror the same and what cross paths the reason why they cross paths and so it's like God is doing, God is healing two people at the same time. But if they both mirror their karma, and I mean that if he has two brothers, he's got two brothers. If he got two brothers and an aunt that raised him, he's got two brothers and an aunt that raised him, or two sisters and an uncle that raised him. The dynamic will be the same. This is called psychological and physical mirroring. But again, like I mentioned, uh, you can't see God because you'll die, right? Because God is us in human form. If we look at God, we're going to look at ourselves, and that's a zero point, and, and it cancels out, right? Cancels out. So when two karma makes me, and they become aware of the karma, because they're not going to become aware unless they see themselves reflected in the other. This causes a healing, double, like a double helix. I mean, it causes something in the psyche that says, oh, wait a minute, this is me. And then when they see the pathology in the person and they know that it's them, it cancels out and they become healed. Yes. So this is the reason why karma men would attract. Because maybe they spent many lifetimes doing the same thing and now they got to learn that, listen, if you can just find out and take time and relax and pause and find out what you're doing, you can realize that you are the one creating your own hell or your own paradise because of your mind and what you're bringing with you. And that will be reflected on the partner. And that's a way of healing, karma mates. Then you have twin flame. Twin flame usually do not have sex or do not become sexually attracted. Sometimes they do, most times they don't. And those that do become uh, sexually involved break up stormingly because they're too much alike. Too much alike. And both have uh, either daddy issues or mommy issues. But drastic and emotional um, deprivation of depravity. Uh, twin flames, the reason why it's called flame is because these are fiery, fiery, fiery people. And they are supposed to get together. The reason why twin flames come together it's because both of them are supposed to come together to create something that's going to impact the world. These are high-level beings, but it doesn't mean that they're going to have advanced or alert or aware egos that will align with their flame. They may walk around being twin flames not even realizing or knowing it. And they will attract other twin flames. And this can cause problems, fights. These are your Leos, your Aries. You know, your alpha male, your narcissist, you know, all the other fire, the element fire, fiery people who could be uh, out of control emotionally or kind of reckless in their personal lives, but are quite productive leaders and doers and cardinals, you know, very, very productive, very valuable, and they're here to impact the world, let nothing stop them, and they improve the world in some way. This is the purpose for Twin Flames coming together. It is about vocation or mission, not about romance or getting together. Right? Uh, then you have twin souls. Twin souls are souls that were put here to do the same mission. Uncanny. Uncanny. 
and both will be doing the same thing, both different language, different race, different culture. These are called, say, a twin soul. The soul, they are doing the things that they are born to do, but one to advance their race for their culture, and the other one as well. Okay, those are twin souls. They have missions. Twin flames have missions too, but you cannot overlook them. You cannot ignore them. They will let themselves know just by the mere acts of their works or by the mere energy that they carry. Twin souls move about quietly, under the radar, and humbly. Then we have same soul. Same souls is a complex category because it encompasses that and more classifications of specific karma that they're here to do. And there's four categories of karma, right? And each are governed by four numbers, 13, 14, 16, and 19. People born on these dates, or if their birth chart is full of these degrees, 14, 13, 16, and 19, there is heavy karma that has to be resolved. Uh, the first 50 years of life. After the first 50 years of life, the karma will live and the person can proceed to do what he was put here to do. But the sacrifice of that time elapsed is the karmic uh, cycle that has to be cycled out before the person can do what he was put here to do. Okay? If you understand these dynamics, it makes it much more easier in making an intelligent choice in choosing a partner. Uh, you have same souls, and you have soulmates. Soulmates, okay, are those that go to, they go to bed together. Twin souls might go to bed together, but it's not recommended because it might, it might distract them from the goal that they got to do. Because to win a relationship, either casual or long-term requires energy and time and dedication, and, it, and that can take away from what you need, what you're put here to do. Maybe being in a relationship is not the priority, but the mission that you're put here to do. Maybe the relationship comes later. You know, these are the things that can be determined in a birth chart. Okay, same soul. Um, again, soulmates, it, it's, uh, they sleep together and they're supposed to. Same souls, not recommended. Some do, and it doesn't work out either. It doesn't work out. Twin souls, um, twin souls can, probably is more comfortable, more, uh, twin flame, no. Twin souls, yes. Okay. Karma mate? Yes. Okay. Because the karma may lie in the sexuality. You never know where the karma is. You know? uh, the numbers that I just described give categories of what the karmic issue is. But we won't discuss that here. And then we have the sixth category, which is the monastic. And the monastic is the one that's like your Buddhas, your, your spiritualists, your gurus, your priests, you know, your shamans that are not supposed to take wife. But the, the, the wife becomes God or, or the church for Jesus, you know, or a man, it's a woman, you know. She's the, the bride, right? And then the church is the bride of, of Christ. That's why a priest is dressed in black with a little white. And yet a groom, when he marries a woman, wears also black with a little white. They say, like a priest. They, they, that's not by accident. That's to confer that the true gift is the woman. So the woman, a human female, marries the man. She is the wealth and, and the prosperity for the man. Just like the bride of Jesus is the church, Shekinah or Shekinah. Nah. So again, as about so below. That's why the outfit for the groom is very similar to that of the Catholic priest. Now they're telling you something. That, that, that there's a principle here that's being um, preserved. Um, well, that's it. That's all I have to say. Um, this will be normal by Monday. By Monday, things will be normal. I'll be on a regular schedule, but we have to do this and I have to prepare because more is coming. I won't be able to talk to you guys like I normally do because I still got to make sure that some of this negative energy is cleared. I'm protected, but I'm not quite sure if you are. But so, um, guys, thank you so much. Oh, okay, we did pretty good. See you later. Oh, <laughs> you know, I tried it, right? I tried it, uh, but it's not a... Uh... you believe that? Oh, God, you know, what can we do? What can we do? Yeah, uh-huh, there we go. Unbelievable, unbelievable.
unbelievable. We are 